Hello, everyone. Welcome to our first episode of the Theory of Curriculum podcast. My name is Michelle Angelo Dantas, and today I am your host. I hope you all are doing well despite all this coronavirus crisis. Please put your headphones on, the volume of your phone or laptop up, and let's talk about curriculum. Curriculum as a healing and fluid process. So today I'm here to chat with you all about Curetti, a topic that I have been reading and studying since I took analysis of curriculum class with Dr. Augusto last summer. As you know, this week, one of our readings talks about Curetti and its importance in education. But first, before we go deep in our reading, do you know what the term Curetti means? Well, Curetti is, the, is a Latin term that means to run the race course which is an infinitive form of curriculum. For this week class, we read the article, The Method of Curetti, written in 1975 by William Pinar. But who is William Pinar and the reasons he is so important in education, especially when you are talking about the theories of curriculum? Well, William Pinar was born in 1947, and he's an American educator and curriculum theorist. In 1969, he graduated with a, with a bachelor's in education from Ohio State University, and one of his first jobs was as an English high school teacher in New York. In 1970, he returned to Ohio State University to obtain his master's and his PhD in education. Pinar is the founding editor of the Journal of Curriculum Theorizing, and he was also one of the co-founders of the Bergamo Conference on Curriculum Theory in Classroom Practice, a very known conference in curriculum studies. Pinar is part of the reconceptualist movement with curricularists do not believe in only implementing and evaluating the curriculum, but the importance of understanding the curriculum and including different forms of knowledge, such as history, politics, race, gender, phenomenology, postmodernism, autobiography, aesthetics, theology, and the world. According to Paul Golden at the website Talk Curriculum, the process of the understanding curriculum, which is the essence of Curetti, and an ongoing complicated conversation that's a dynamic phenomenon and unique to every learner. As we are le learning, Pinar made significant contributions to curriculum studies, and that's the reason we are reading and discussing his ideas today in class. But now, let's go back to his article, The Method of Curetti, written in 1975. According to Pinar, Curetti is a method that inspires educators and learners to use their personal stories and experiences as a form of self-examination. Curetti, as curriculum, is an autobiographical process of one's lived experience through remembering the past imagining the future and analyzing the present. The curriculum is not a static process, it is a fluid one. It changes and continuously adapts according to the teachers' and students' experiences and interpretations. This theory of curriculum goes beyond educational standards. It reflects how teachers and students contribute and interact during learning. According to Moreau, Curetti provides the possibility to explore in between space, where teachers and students are active participants. They shape the curriculum together, generating experiences, meanings, and new opportunities. Moreau states that curriculum is always an individual creation, and the results for each teacher and student 
will always be unique. It is through this process that curriculum comes to life. But according to Pinar, the method Coretti is divided into four steps. Do you remember? So let's go and talk about this. The first stage, Pinar calls us regressive process, where one returns to the past to capture our, our previous experiences. He states that usually our past is ignored, but our previous experiences shape who we are today. It shapes our knowledge, our beliefs, and our actions. Pinay states that sometimes we take our past for granted, but at the past becomes present, the present is reviewed. Let's imagine together the re regressive stage in educational settings. How were, how were the past life in schools? Then try to imagine this. Here, Pina question if we can remember our personal experience as students and maybe as educators. How was your interaction with our teachers and classmates? How was the process of learning? And what our past can teach us as a student and as an educator? And how can those experiences impact our present today? The stage two is the second process called progressive. In this process, Pina encourage us to project and look at our future. Just a pause here. But personally, I love when Pina talks about that he tell us to sit in a darkened room and meditate during stage two so we can pay attention to our breathing and thoughts. In this stage, he will reflect on our future and how we imagine our tomorrow and our next month, maybe our next academic year, and how our intentions can influence our educational experiences, our personal and intellectual interests, our career, and so on. And how can this process influence our interaction with our students, families, and colleagues? In the third step, Pina called the stage three as analytical. Here, Pina encouraged us to look at our reflections about our past experiences and our future and combine and put them together. He also talks phenom phenomenologically about suspending judgment or bracketing what is, what was, and what can be. Pina motivates us to analyze the three images, our past, our present, and our future. Contemplate how can we generate data with those three images and understand how each is connected. The final stage in the number four is the synthetical. In this process, Pina urge people to look consciously at images about our past and future and ask how can we create the meaning of our present and make contributions to our scholarly and professional work? How does this self-reflection process help us, namely educators, make more conscious contributions as educational leaders and practitioners? How can one self-reflection and consciousness influence our intellect, emotions, and expressions as behaviors through our own body? This is what Kureti means. That's what he wants to say. It's through Kureti, we can reduce the distance between the researcher and our subject. But as an educator and leader, we can reduce the distance between us teachers and our students and their families. Through this process, we become more conscious about our actions as educators, but also we look at our students with different perspectives. So, I hope you enjoyed the Curriculum Theory podcast. Please do not hesitate to send uh, your review or questions. 
We are here learning and growing together. Thank you for taking your time to listen to this podcast. And we, Dr. Augusta and I, Michelle, are looking forward to hearing your feedback on Corelli. Have a great day and stay safe. <music>